Well, hello, welcome back to the program. We're continuing our work on our Ruby implementation called Natalie. And uh, in the last video, I had mentioned that uh, there was a perceptible slowdown in one of our tests and uh, in our parser tests. And uh, let's just make sure we're all up to date here. Ben, Natalie test, Natalie parser test. And I was starting to notice the dots painting as they go across. So it's kind of a red flag. I want to pause on the parser and see if there's something we can optimize here to see if if uh, it's just some boneheaded uh, thing we're doing repeatedly in Natalie that we can fix easily or if it's something fundamentally wrong with our parser library that we chose to use. If that's the case then we definitely need to hit the brakes but I probably would bet good money that it's something that we could easily fix because uh, Natalie has not had any optimization whatsoever and uh, it's just kind of the the uh, uh, my approach has been whatever is the simplest that can possibly work and we've gotten this far it's not been too bad so far so I think it's time to just take a peek at some of the performance issues and see if there's something simple we can do to speed it up and uh, we may not get uh, we may not get it blazing fast today, but if we can make forward progress, then I will feel good about it. So I was thinking the that um, one of the reasons that I believe that the parser test is slow is because it it creates a whole bunch of arrays. Excuse me, it creates a whole bunch of arrays, and. Um, I, rather than profiling, I mean, I guess I could just profile this test, uh, but I think I'd rather do this, speed.rb, and just do something fundamental uh, to see see what we can do. Let's see, so if I do, I don't know, maybe 10,000 times, and um, let's create an array here, and let's just add an array to that. I don't even know how many I need to do here. Let's just do 10 items in this array. And we'll do this, uh, yeah, let's do this a few times. And the reason I'm putting this inside of an array is because I'm not sure if Ruby does any dead code analysis. I don't think it does, but just in case, I think that will fool it enough that it won't, uh, it'll think that it's actually doing something here. So if we time this with Ruby, Oh, we get something pretty fast, 0.09 seconds. If we time it with, um, <clears throat> now to be fair, I need to compile it uh, because I don't want to measure my my compilation time. Uh, speed rb, and we do time speed. Now that's definitely slower. That's an order of magnitude slower. And hopefully that's something we can profile and try to get uh, get a little bit closer towards this. We may not get all the way there today, but uh, we'll see see how far we can get. So um, one way, can, <coughs> excuse me, one way we can do this is um, uh, I've already forgotten how to do this. Actually, val grind call grind uh, tool dash dash tool. Okay, val grind tool call grind. And we can run speed. And that is uh, not fast. Okay, so it ended up finishing here. And the file we get out is this one. So I believe if I do kcache grind that file, we should get some beautiful output here. And um, Let's just uh, take a look down through here and see what stands out. Uh, and let's do, let's, uh, it's already sorted by that, that's good. Uh, let's see here, what's the name of this? So call method, um, that's, I mean, self, it, it doesn't spend a lot of time in that method itself, it's just everything underneath it. And that would make sense because um, we're doing at the top of our file, oh, I need a new tab, and speed. Uh, we're doing this as a method call, so I would expect that to be really high up. Um, 
Actually, let's sort by self. How much time do they spend in self? Okay, so we're not going to be able to fix anything in the garbage collector because we don't own that. Um, hash string, that is not fast. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to speed up the the algorithm itself because it's just a string hashing algorithm. And so we should, um, at some point, work on reducing the need for this. And um, a lot of what calls this is hash map get and hash map, um, you know, put and delete and stuff like that. So really what we should optimize is is um, our, how many times we're doing hash map get. And one of the things that I've put off now with Natalie is doing string and turning. We don't have any string and turning. So every string is literally just passed around the program and um, that's why you end up with this hash map hash string a whole bunch of times. And so at some point I'm gonna tackle that, but probably not uh, in a video or at least not in this video, just because that's a, uh, a big task. It's going to require rewriting huge portions of Natalie. So uh, probably not going to hit this today unless we can see a way to reduce the number of calls to hash map get or uh, yeah hash map get that would be that would be it probably that's the main one. So another garbage collector garbage collector <clears throat> hash map entry find that goes along with this <clears throat> hash map stuff so if we can reduce calls to that, we'd be good. Um, every time we create a new value, uh, let me move this down a little bit. What does source code do? Oh, okay, that doesn't help me much. So, I don't know. I might come back to that. I'm not sure what to th what to think about that. Does that mean that it's slow to create the the value, the object, or is are we calling? Um, so it's it's giving it a type and the pointer of the class already. Interesting. Okay, well, I might come back to that. Um, Pushing an item onto, oh, how did I, what have I done here? There we go. Pushing an item onto a vector is uh, something that we could try to reduce. And I assume that, yeah, that's being called by array push, which will be down here somewhere probably. So if we can reduce calls to that, that would be probably helpful. Let me just look at something really quick. So if I go to array value HPP and and it's giving an initializer list, then we're gonna call push a whole bunch of times, aren't we? This could definitely be optimized. So even if you don't, um, so I believe in pass one somewhere, where, we, where do we build an array? Gotta find it. Okay, here it is, process array. So, yeah, we're, we're actually compiling to C code where we're calling push a whole bunch of times. But even if we didn't do that, even if we built it as an initializer list, um, it would internally call push, which this could be sped up quite a bit. So there's an opportunity to speed up a little bit of code and that um, I think this is like a percentage, right? So that's 13% of the work is being spent right there. That would be a good place to uh, to work on. And um, let's see. There's another one of these constructors. So I'm not sure what to think about the constructors yet. So another constructor, hash map get, string comparison. That's part of hash map compare string just going down here. So const fetch, that's a whopping 22%. Holy moly. 
const fetch and its callers are integer value interesting integer value is calling const fetch a whole bunch of times so the constructor of integer value let's go look at that oh of course yeah so right here we are doing a const fetch which in turn looks up this class name in the hash map which um you know what uh, that's that's what we were talking about this hash map hash string that all all roads leak back to this function so um that would be a really quick and easy optimization is just don't look this up every time we create a new integer uh let's cache that and we already have we already have a, a technique for doing that. I have our global environment. And we've already cached a few objects here. We we have object, uh, the, you know, the, the top level object class, the nil object, true and false. And uh, let's add an integer. Uh, should these be in alphabetical? Yeah, let's do alphabetical order. So, um, yeah, let's we'll, we'll add integer here. And... I'll just copy this. Uh, class value integer, integer, and integer. So we've got a getter and a setter for that. Um, and then where do we set that in main CPP? Uh huh. So where do we do set object? We do it like this. So let's do that same thing for integer. Um, where is even integer? Here it is. So we're going to do set integer and integer right there. And so now integer value HPP. Oops. Int value HPP. What? Come on. Help me out here. I don't know why I can't find that. There it is. Okay. So instead of doing a cost fetch, let's do... Oh. Was there like a little convenience thing here? Yeah, there is. We'll make it a little bit easier. And so we can just do integer. And we don't need to do a const fetch. And we also don't need to call as class. Global env. Just making sure I'm smart. Yep. Well, let's just see what happens with that. Um, so we let's see how can I how can I measure? Let's measure. Let's do some measuring. So if I run this with time, it's point seven, point nine, point seven, point seven. This is a this is a little bit rudimentary, but it'll give us an idea. So it's like when it's kind of in hot in memory cache and everything it's 0.7-ish and the max was 0.9 so oops put that back uh so let's run a make of course that touched all kinds of stuff and um just to make sure that i didn't break anything make sure my board slam script still runs yeah Okay, so if we do a compile of speed and we run it again, do we see a difference? Did that 20% actually have any noticeable effect? Well, yeah, it made everything slower. <laughs> well, it's kind of all over the place. Um, okay, now it's settled down. It is in the 0.6 range, so... Um, yeah, I mean, the low sixes, oh, even got a 0.5, so I think things are looking a little, little bit better now. That's cool, so let's commit that. Uh, include and source. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yep. Is there anywhere else we're doing a const fetch integer? Because, nope, okay. Well, let's do that. Speed up integer uh, class lookup 
Well, that's uh, some progress, and let's do our key. Uh, we, oh, we need to run this with Valgrind. Okay, so remove call grind, Valgrind, and let that run for a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cache grind, call grind out. And let's uh, see, we were kind of sorted by self before, so let's do that again. Let's move this over so I can see it. I don't know what to make of this. I, I'm not very familiar with this tool, so I'm just kind of poking around, but I'm not sure how to read what this is telling me. I'm still not sh yeah, I'm not I'm not sure how to read these these constructors and how how that is spending time other than just allocating memory and setting some data, but I wouldn't expect it to be 10%. Although, I mean, there's a lot of integers, so maybe maybe it is 10%. But it's only saying 2% of that time is spent in the actual constructor and 10% in other methods, other functions. So I don't know. I might come back to that. Um, this is my main uh, main function in the code, so it's obviously going to be pretty hot. <laughs> it has exactly 10,000 times it's called. Uh, but it's, it's not doing a lot itself. Um, here's more hash string, array push. So... I mean, that's another 18%. Ooh, a whopping 55%. So these mu these must not be percentages because they don't add up to 100. But they are kind of nested, too. So maybe that is... Yeah, it must be. Okay, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. So array push uh, takes a while. Here's what it's calling. It's interesting if I click... Okay, so this doesn't affect this. That makes sense. So this is the call E. So presumably only 1.45% 1 1 is spent in the array push, but all of the time almost is spent in vector push, which would make sense. So vector grow at least, that is another 14% of our, our slowness, is growing the vector every time. So I wonder if, um, and uh, let's see, vector, we have our own vector that we implemented. And the reason, you might be asking, well, why not just use the C++ standard library vector? The reason is it slowed everything down, and I don't really know why, uh, but it was like an order of magnitude slower to compile and run Natalie code. Now, I'm not sure how much of that was compilation versus actual runtime, because I didn't look into it. But I remember trying it and going, whoa, I can't do that. I can't live with that. So I put it back to, because uh, this usually or used to be a C, a C program, so some of this code was left over from that. But anyway, uh, I digress. What, uh, but yeah, here, so somewhere here, we have grow. I mean, I could just search for it. Grow at least, and then it calls grow, and that does a realloc. So part of the problem is that our initial capacity is zero, and when we do a grow, um, we grow by double, which, um, you know, it rounds up. So it's going to grow to one, and it's going to grow to two, and then it's going to grow to four. And so it's going to grow several times in a row. I wonder if we should go ahead. I mean, because how, how much was that? That was 14%, and that would be a pretty, pretty simple optimization just to grow straight to, well, I'm tempted to do 10 because that would match 
exactly with my speed RB test. But even even with that, I think 10 would make sense because it can grow from 10 to 20 to 40 and so on. It just it would cut out the first, let's see. So I, I guess we would grow to one and then two and then four and then eight. So it cut out four whole steps of reallocating memory if we just started with 10. And this and this is like a micro optimization probably for this specific test, but it's at least better than what we have and it won't hurt too much. I, I think we would easily be willing to trade the additional memory, because how often do you have an array with, with two or three items? Even if you do, I think we'd be willing to trade the memory, unused memory, for the speed. So let's just see if uh, that helps a little bit. Uh, let's see here. So what what can we do? So what if we do um, that vector min capacity, and we say the min capacity is 10. And we do net vector min capacity here. And when we're creating the vector, actually don't want a filler. And then the initial capacity will be min, oops, net vector min capacity. So how does fill work? Just want to look. Um, yeah, I think there's probably, probably just an, a mem set would be better than that. What does initial capacity do? A data... So I think we need to do this here. Let's see here. Um, and this will be net vector min capacity. And I don't want to do a fill. I want to do a mem set. And um, m data with how did wait what order was that in? Ah, oh, come on. Give me back. You've got to be kidding. Mem set. As soon as I type in parentheses. <laughs> okay, so the pointer, the character, and then the size. So m data, the character is just a zero, and the size is size of t times nat vector min capacity. So that's going to zero all that out. Um, M, well, let's put this back to zero, because if you somehow manage to not use the initializer, then I think we want it to match capacity. It would be that vector min capacity. And um, M size can, can be zero, because it's still zero, but the capacity is bigger. And this one I think is going to remain the same. This one is a mem copy. So that's it. So this is this handles the the case where you've created an empty vector. And let's just make sense or make sure. Uh, you should be, um, so that would be this constructor here. Let me just look over this one more time. So we're going to set the capacity to ten by default. We're going to allocate the memory using our garbage collector malloc. And it's not going to be initialized to zero, so we're going to call mem set on it, initializing it to zero. And that should be a little bit faster, I believe. I mean, is that it? Is that the, all the code I would do? Well, let's just uh, run a make and make sure it compiles. Try to do something boneheaded. So far, so good. Um, and let's do a board slam test. And uh, 
what were we at before? We were at something like 0.5 or 0.6. Did I lose it? That's fine. Uh, should I just... Yeah, let's just compile another speed. We'll call this speed 2. Speed... Actually, speed 3. I already lost speed 2. Speed to RB. Time speed 3. 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Well, that didn't really seem to make much difference, did it? In fact, uh, I don't think it made any difference at all. Well, it certainly didn't hurt. Um, at least I don't think it did. That is interesting, though, because I kind of expected that to make a little bit of a difference, because I think that was something like... Um, grow at least, that was 14%, but maybe it's just hard to perceive with the with this timing I do want to make sure that oh wait a second yeah yeah hmm do we think this code is being run hello I mean, I'm sure it is. Um, yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm just going to wait for this. I'm going to do... Uh, let's close that. And we'll do... K cash grind. Uh, which one's the oldest or the newest? I assume it's this one. Yeah, the bigger number. Okay, K cash grind. And run it again. And... Um, Let's just see. Grow at least. I wish this would just start out a little bit bigger. Well, look at that. I mean, it went down to 0.37. So it definitely had an effect. It's just hard to perceive it uh, on the command line. But that's okay. That's good progress. So, so now that I know the call E is down here, E and V. 3 million calls, the environment is creating a value? Am I reading that right? Let me just look through that real quick. EMVHPP. Where would this be creating a value? Well, of course, you can have all kinds of accessors here. I guess it could be the variables or something. Yeah, that that's puzzling. I don't understand this. So vector push is 3%. Almost 4%. Integer value. I was really hoping for some for some easy wins today. Uh, we made it a little bit better, but not as drastically as I'd hoped. I kind of wonder if string and turning is going to be more helpful because look at send. Um, I assume that send. Uh, oh, call ease. Find method. Its callees are all right. For module find method. It calls itself. Hash map get is a whole bunch, and then it loops through. Hmm. Loops through the module list. I think for things like method calls and stuff like that and constant lookups, I think it's going to help to, to do some string and turning, but not today. So what, uh, one thing we can do, I know will help, is to do the same thing f that we did for integer, we do it for array. So it doesn't have to look that up all the time. Yeah, 
and we'll do it down here as well. And main CPP. Where is our array? Where is our array? Here it is. Array, array, and then an array uh, constructor. Now, why is there a constructor down here? I guess, oh, because you can construct an array from a vector, but it's private. Hmm. It's interesting. So, oh, and then EMV, yeah, I need a little convenience. These were supposed to be in order. Array, array, and we'll do array here. Don't need the as class. Let's just see if there's any more. I don't think I did that right. Okay, so that's it. So let's close that and let's go through our changes here. So we'll do that for array, array, uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, not the vector stuff yet, yep. So what did I call it? Speed up. Speed up array class lookup. And we'll do the um, set initial capacity of vector to 10 by default. It's kind of a, I don't know, that's a trade off we, we, you know, might revisit, but I think it's good for today. What's another? Speed three. Nope. Speed three. Let's do speed four. And then we'll do val grind speed four. Okay, so we do that's this one, right? Yeah. We'll do one more pass and then probably call it good for today. Uh, I was just hoping for something a little more, more of a win. We know send is going to be pretty slow. Well, I think that's, hmm. I mean, only called call method five times, but it was a lot of work because of our huge loop that we were doing. So I don't think that's a smell. Call method, same for call method. Um, method run, same. Times, times, block run, block function, GC stuff, a whole bunch of GC stuff that we will not be able to do much with. And I'm still puzzled by why integer value is 11% other than maybe it's just the, um, you know, the work of allocating it. It must be. It must be this the work to allocate it. When are we calling push? When are we calling push? Oh, uh I think I know when we're calling push. Okay. Then Nelly speed RBD. Oops. 
let's do less push. Uh, yeah, so every line of code. Oh, right, because I said we didn't optimize. Well, hey, we could optimize that, right? We'd have to optimize this as well. Do I want to do that vector? I don't have an initializer list for vector. Even if I did, what would what would it do? Fascinating. What if we did um, set do I don't really have that, do I? Oh, I'm really surprised I don't. have an initial capacity and then the filler. I need one without a filler. The size is still zero. The data is that. We're going to do mem set on that. Is that right? I think that's right. So that way we can pass in an initial capacity. And then this can be um, list.size. Hopefully that works. And we don't care about that. Oh, oh, right, of course, of course. Okay, so that's fine. Um, do I even care about that? I think I just want this one. No, not class. I want this one. Okay, maybe we're getting closer here. List that size, non cost of correction cannot be narrowed from type initial list size type. To S size type, yeah. Ugh. That's that's gonna be a problem. And I know this is really janky. This is gross. Fix me. Stop using. <laughs> Stop using signed size type. That was a mistake. Okay, four. So I don't want to do four. I just, well, yeah, I kind of do. But instead of doing a push, which has to grow it every time, I want to do a set. And actually, now that I think about it, push is just fine. Push is just fine. I'm going to get rid of the set that I wrote because I don't think we need that. Uh, so are you, are you happy? You're happy, okay. Okay, so this sets the initial size, and push will be a little faster, because it's not... I mean, have I really done anything, though? Have I really done anything? Because the initial capacity was already 10. Well, this has to help a little bit. Maybe not in this exact benchmark that we've been using, but if we know the size of this list, then we can go ahead and create that uh, that vector at that size. So let's let's say that we're going to do that, and I'm not even going to bother um, 
benchmarking that because I, I don't think that actually has any effect on our current benchmark but I will run our tests well we actually did break something it's the parser test that uh, surprises me so ben Nelly test Nelly parser test so undefined method each for nil. So I definitely broke something. I wonder if it was this most recent. So let's do um let's check uh, let's do a stash on that. And let's do a make and run that test again. It's possible I did something stupid there. Or it might have been in one of the previous runs. Yeah, I did it in that. Okay, well, we're just not, not going to commit that because I wasn't, wasn't feeling like um, that was good progress anyway. So that that was weird. I'm not even sure. Hmm, not sure what to think about that. But I probably did something stupid with mixing up capacity and size, which I tend to do a lot. But let's remove. Let's, uh, let's close this. And let's remove all the call grind stuff. And I'm I was thinking while the test was running that my I'm doing this recording and my my processor gets a little hot and I think that things are throttling. So I'm going to um, I'm going to let's see how can I do this. Let's go back to here. Let's check that out. And then let's do a make clean build. So let's do a before and after. And then I'll pause the recording and, and run it when my computer's nice and cool. And uh, I mean, yes, I can see, I can even just feel the heat coming off of it. Uh, but let's do Ben Natalie compile speed before speed.rb and then we'll check out master again and we'll do another clean build and then we'll do a speed after and we'll see if there's any difference so here I'm going to pause the video and um, uh, run these off camera and then I'll, I'll be right back with the results. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so I, instead of using the time utility, um, I've, I've forgotten about this, but perf stat will let you run something multiple times. And this actually showed a, a better, better result, told a better story. So before it took 905 milliseconds, so almost a second to run our speed test and now it's 650 so that's a uh, I mean I, I don't know what what math that is but uh, it's it's pretty good so if I do uh, 905 minus can't type 650 that's 255 over 905 if I'm doing this math right that's like uh, almost a 30% improvement so I'd say that is a success so we'll call this uh, little session a good good forward progress thanks for hanging out with me today and um, as always I hope you have a side project that you're hacking on and learning and uh, um, getting that expression out and having a good time so uh, thanks for hanging out with me as I work on mine and I will see you next time bye